Hello. Sorry, I was sleeping. Oh, wait for people to come in real quick. Oh. Hello. I was taking a nap. I'm sorry, guys. I've been trying to catch up on much needed sleep. So I will more than likely be heading back to the other side of the Mississippi. Hey, guys. I'm waiting to find out more. But um, hopefully by the end of the week, I'll be back closer to my time zone. But uh, so yeah, I've been doing paperwork all day and taking care of business and uh, looking for my next assignment. I'm kind of picky, but the few options that I do have definitely have PPE, definitely don't have an issue with patient safety. And uh, actually, the one facility um, makes you shower before you go in. And the scrubs never leave the building, which is pretty awesome. And the other one, the state came in to help out because that's a positive thing when the hospital actually calls the state like, hey, we got a problem. Can you come help? Instead of let's hide it all and sweep it under the rug. So... Both of them are viable options, and I'm looking forward to hopefully getting back, I don't want to say closer to home because it'll still be like 10 hours away, um, but it'll be better than the situation I was in. Yes, that's how we do it. That is correct, that that would be the appropriate way to do things. Um, I do want to give a shout out to the Navajo Nation. Um, they definitely need water. Um, I did share a Facebook group link. Um, to, it's on my page and it's for um, getting food and water to them guys. And there have been some reach outs also to try and help these folks out because it is hotter than hell out there right now in the desert. And not to have any freaking water other than a gallon a day is ridiculous. I mean, most of these folks don't have a vehicle to get around to come get supplies. So it's really, really, really high, tight. So please keep these folks in mind. Donate if you can. Um, come together right now because they do have an outbreak out there and it's pretty bad. And they're trying to keep it from spreading. Um, I hope to God that they limit who's allowed on that reservation right now because apparently there was a giant party the night before all the lockdowns went into place and unfortunately um, alcohol was a big problem there and everybody got pretty drunk and you know there was homeless folks that were stuck together in a room and it was like a lot of people and all it takes is one person to have that virus and it spread pretty bad and rip through the community pretty quickly on the outside of the reservation and it doesn't take long to carry it in. So this is really a big bummer for a lot of people. And then, uh, anyone wish you were, yeah, just, you know, what really bums me out is that my hometown in Michigan is underwater. Um, three dams gave way last night. Um, they had too much water and they just could not hold um, the amount of water that f fell yesterday was unreal and the dams gave way and there's water running everywhere and it's like I wish I could give that water to the folks out west who need it I mean there is such a strong current I mean they were evacuating people late last night like at midnight the sirens were going off and uh it devastated this little area. I mean, my hometown is not rich by, by any means. And to see all these folks struggling is really hard because a lot of them lost a lot. Um, the lakes overfilled. I mean, the roads are gone. Um, there's a beautiful building in Gladwin that I, I, I really, at this point, think that they are reconsidering where they built the Riverwalk building in Gladwin. Because I don't think there's a year that's gone by since they built it 
that they really haven't been underwater, but I don't think it's been this bad. There's a river that runs behind it, and it's the Cedar River, and it just overfills every year, and you can't get in the parking lot. But this, there's a lot of drone footage, which really helps to see the extent of the damage that they're dealing with, and it's really hard. Um, I don't know how, it's a, it's a, a state of emergency. I thought I turned off my notifications, sorry. Um, so it's just really hard. And I've been kind of keeping an eye on that all day while dealing with other time zones and where I'm going to next. I have so many licenses. I was possibly going to head to Michigan, but the job situation up there, it's kind of like up and down. And the one position I have is only like five to six hours a day, like six days a week. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell I would do for six hours. And y'all get to see my normal hair. It's like everywhere. Um, I just decided not to blow dry it today. So this is my crazy hair. You'll have to deal with it. <laughs> well, I hope everybody's out there doing okay. Um, for those of you who don't know, I did end my contract at my current former, actually not current, but uh, a former hospital because of a lot of safety issues. And then there was some retaliatory behavior that was completely inappropriate. Um, just not going to deal with that um, when you don't stand up for things. <laughs> After I got done enjoying that Chinese meal last night, I cracked open my uh, fortune cookies. And the one of, let's see, when your values are clear to you, making decisions becomes easier. And then the other one, you can't steal second base and keep, that's not the one. This isn't the one. I don't know where this one came from. Hmm. I only had two cookies. But this is not the one I read. But this one, though, really hit home. You know, when your values are clear to you, making decisions, decisions become easier. It's not hard to think about when you have an integrity and a certain standard of care, um, it's not hard to speak up for people who can't speak up for themselves. Is it the worst ever flood, Amy? Oh my God. I remember our high school used to flood in the cafeteria. It's just very low lying land there. And um, in the spring it, it would get bad, but this I've never seen the dams, three dams give way. I'm praying to God there's no rain in the forecast. It looked like it's gonna dump on North Carolina over here. And uh, this is pretty bad for everybody. Um, hey, Georgia. No problem, Chantel. Let us know how you guys are doing out there, sweetie. There's a lot of folks that are worried about you on here. No, I'm not going to stop talking to you. Absolutely not. Hopefully, I'll have even better information. Um, I'm kind of going to be chasing corona everywhere. Um the contract that I'm looking at is only eight weeks, and it's a fast start. I'll really have to load up and just run across the country again. But um, hopefully it'll give the states enough time to open up and <laughs> figure out what's going on, because I don't want to bring my son out to El Paso if I can't take him out to do anything yet. So maybe an extra four weeks won't be such a bad thing. Um, I'll actually be able to pack up and go do something with the child. He's... Him and I are both not ones that like to stay at home. Um, he likes his video games, yes, but he also loves to go fishing. And I really wanted to go back to Yellowstone this year. So we will see what happens. Um, I'm excited. I didn't get too upset about this whole situation because um, it was not healthy. And... You don't make up a situation just to end a contract. I mean, this a physician was completely out of line, and it's a good thing. Healthcare workers always document your ass off and cover your ass. Um, it's just not okay. That's not the kind of thing that you do to people, and there's no amount of money that's going to keep somebody silent who has integrity to speak up for situations that aren't right. Um it's just not. 
Yes, please let us know how you can help Chantel. I, there's a lot of folks who are asking out there. Um, I did see that there is the one Facebook group and there's the people bringing you guys in food and water. I want to make sure it's getting to you and if that's the best idea or if there's somewhere else. I am a nomad. I am a modern day gypsy. And that's one of the reasons that my ex-husband and I got along because he's a biker and he wanted to travel with me when um, the kids graduated, but I'm happy to be getting back to it before all of that. But uh, I love traveling. I travel for the food. I do. I travel <laughs> so I can try and experience new places. Um, Texas is a hot bed of problems still. Um, the thing is with Texas, it's 900 miles across. So what seems like, you know, a short trip from here to Michigan, that would be like from where I'm at now going home to my house in El Paso to the other side of Texas. It's very comparable. Um, it's a long trip. Uh, you don't realize how big Texas is until you attempt to drive through it. And it's like 14 and a half hours to get out. Far West El Paso is about as far as you can get in Texas. Um, it's practically in New Mexico and Mexico. So I would be on the complete opposite side um, if I do take the position um, in a different spot than I've been. So that's pretty exciting because I wanted to check out a few other places in Texas. Um, but I wouldn't be actually working for the hospital. I would be working for the State Department of Health. Yeah, that's the way to go. Um, PPE, big time. Um, in Texas, it's the governor has it set up to where there's like task force, task force, and if something happens, it's okay to pick up the phone and call the state and go, "Hey, we have an outbreak. Can you come help us out? Educate us." And fantastic. Um, not let's hide it and not take care of folks. Um, uh, appropriately i just i have a lot of problems with the way things were being done out here sorry i'm like half asleep still i was watching videos on how to do sublimation ink things with my uh new setup and i fell asleep i guess if i want to take a nap when i'm not tired watching youtube videos is the way to do it um so yeah, I'll find out more here in the next day or so. So don't send me any more packages. I don't think I'll be out here much longer. Um, hopefully by the end of the week, I'll be somewhere warm. Um, I'm really over being cold. It's freaking cold again here. Memorial Day weekend's coming up and God, my hair is a mess. Holy cow. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, I might be able to get a little bit closer to home to come back and visit my cats. Oh, Lillian, I don't know. Were you here last night? Okay, before I get one more question about the hydroxychloroquine, I did a huge video on this last night. I also shared a, I think it was, it was on the RT says what page, but I also shared it to my private page. There's multiple links to the studies that say bullshit and there's no indication to be taking this prophylactically. Um, they are doing a study through the NIH to even see, you know, if it's um, got any clinical significance again, you know, they're trying to do it in a controlled observational trial. But as of right now, do not run out to your freaking doctor's office and ask them for hydroxychloroquine. Do not, do not, do not, please do not. People need that medication for what it's actually intended for and for what it's prescribed for, for other conditions that we know it helps with. Do not short these people of their medication by driving your doctor crazy to ask for it because my wonderful president got on TV last night and decided to announce he was taking it. Um, I This is one of those moments that he should just stop talking about stuff like that just don't because the doctor said it works um doesn't mean i i i i'm just in fucking shock um pardon my french do not bother 
right now. We have no evidence that it works. The VA study said it doesn't work. It actually caused more harm. So there's no indication. It is not in a randomized controlled trial. Remdesivir is the only one that has been shown to clinically improve outcomes slightly. And that is in the next phase of the randomized controlled trial where they're giving that or that same drug with an anti-inflammatory. There's no indication that hydroxychloroquine works. Um, what are some of the issues you're seeing here? <laughs> Lack of PPE and patient safety issues. Um, it's not so bad at other hospitals with the patient safety as it was at the one I was at. This really seems to be isolated. Um, I've not seen people complaining about the stuff that we are seeing at this particular hospital. And I did talk to one of the other employees who's a traveler who's out here still. And, uh, yeah, the rumors are just great, but everybody wants to chase that crisis pay and they don't want to give it up. So they're not going to say anything. And, uh, I just want to do my time and get it over. Well, that's not the answer. Um, if people are being, subpar cared for you know it's your moral obligation to speak up for people who can't speak up for themselves and uh i was put out here i, I for an intended purpose um i'm not even upset about it i'm actually relieved because i was not comfortable skirting around what i know is basic standards of care um there are stu you know, there are things that we know that we are short on, that we know we have to work with, we know that we need to do, but common safety, you know, even infection control and cleaning. And that's one of the things that the um that the state had came in to do was educate the staff because they contracted the virus from one in particular individual and it spread, so they they educated, and the big thing was infection control. So this is definitely a place I wanna be at because they're obviously big on the same things I am, which is education and patient safety. Those are two things I hold dear, and I refuse to skirt around it. I had a wonderful supervisor at University Medical Center in El Paso, and people would get free. I would even get frustrated with her when she would come around when I was busier than hell, and. You can't do that. You have to take that off your cart, you know, but whatever. But it's because she knows the rules and she was teaching us the proper things. So when the Joint Commission came in, we didn't have any problems. This place that I was at would probably think my supervisor was crazy. But she was crazy about patient care. And I appreciate all of the work that she did because that's very, very important. She was awesome. And uh, that's a good supervisor. That's a good it's a great staff and they were proactive there at, at my hospital in El Paso early on when all of this happened they were already taking temperatures at the door um our N95s they could foresee in the future that this was going to be a problem so they began to sterilize the masks that we were able to reuse so they were able to build a stash that we wouldn't run out of this place here, nothing. I mean, no prep work, no anything. They're not even cleaning the like the bed rails in between patients. I mean, they were covered in substances that you could visibly see soiled. And even if you pointed it out, it still wasn't getting clean. I mean, I had a really big problem with that. Cleaning a room that still had a ventilator in it that was covered in COVID is not freaking acceptable. Um, there was just no, the, uh, there's a reason people keep getting sick and it's human error and laziness and, and that's not okay. I, I don't skirt around patient care and this more than ever also reinforced, I had a long talk with another retired respiratory therapist today, ex-military, but uh, malpractice insurance is really important because your name's on those notes at those facilities. And even if you are covered under your hospital's malpractice insurance, the hospital loves to throw employees under the bus, even if you did things right. 
So it's best to cover your ass. So definitely looking into malpractice insurance. It's actually very reasonably priced. So um, there's going to be that change that's made. So you always learn. These are always educational experiences, and I will definitely take what I've learned and use it constructively. Um, it just breaks my heart because the guy that I fought to keep off that ventilator is probably not going to make it. And this is the one that the doctor made up um, that he had a cardiac arrest because I interfered and he never coded at all. He will be soon, unfortunately. Um, but that was a lie that was made up to cover the fact that I was bringing up things that they didn't want to deal with. Like we weren't given our PPE to go even deal with COVID. There was a lot of safety issues. So it was retaliatory and I'm going to follow up with all the appropriate agencies with that behavior. Um, it's coming. You don't make accusations like that. And anybody who knows me knows I am very passionate about healthcare and that, that that's just ridiculous. So I hate that, that I'm dealing with that, but um, I am an awesome teacher. When I do retire from all this, I plan on doing education and respiratory. Maybe I'll slowly work on my education degree, but I don't want to do it right now. I'm so tired of going to school <laughs> on somebody else's agenda. Um, I like learning on my own. Um, but when I do finally not work in direct patient care or I can't pound those ICU floors anymore, education is what I want to do. And I used to substitute teach. I loved it. I loved, I did K through 12 and a lot of the seniors and juniors over at the college would take um, dual enrolled classes for college credit while they were in high school and I would substitute those classes. Welding, loved substituting welding class and machine tool. Um, I used to do welding and automotive, so it all, it all worked out. Um, they used to, they used to get a kick out of me showing up. So, uh, education is very important to me. I hope you don't catch COVID either, man. They still have New York locked down pretty well. I see that they put the, um, fences up on the beaches so people don't go out on the on the beach this weekend but you can come to new jersey and do it so it's not like it's far away um but they're not really they keep fining that poor gym owner for reopening but you know he has it right and the governor's like we're not there yet well you maybe you should take note from these guys and see what they've done about the rules <laughs> and uh how strict that they are with the with the disinfecting there and maybe consider a model and uh get these places open because we can't sit home and these folks can't go broke. Um, there does need to be a safe way to do things. And there is. Wear a damn mask and stay socially distant from each other. It's really not that hard. Other countries are doing it. If we would just follow directions and quit having no mask parties, like chicken pox parties, um, we could do this. We really could. If I didn't have my dipshit president on TV taking hydroxychloroquine prophylactically to not get COVID, which there is no indication that you won't get COVID by taking it. I don't even understand. Um, this is this is not okay. Not okay at all. Just 76 additional deaths in law. We are going to have a... Yeah, it's windy as hell here, Madeline. Um, I got, I went outside and got like whapped in the head with a bunch of leaves in a plastic bag because of where the wind pulls up here in the hotel nooks and crannies. But, um, I'm just in shock as to what I'm seeing right now. I, I just, we are going to have a spike in cases with the state's reopening. I keep seeing the news, no spike in cases since they reopened. Um, of course not. It takes like 10 to 12 days for the incubation period of the virus and then several days for symptoms to start appearing and then they progressively get worse and then you're knocked down on your ass for almost 45 days. So yeah, of course you're not going to see any new spikes right now. Give it a few weeks. I'm not going to know which if I'm coming or going again. He said it again today. Yeah. 
Yeah, the valley is going to be interesting. Um, read again today that his family is financial. Yeah, I would be really curious about that because um, of anything, like a lot of these like rheumatic drugs that they take for the overactive immune system, um, those would be more appropriate drugs to trial. And we are versus this anti-malaria drug. I understand that they think, you know, that, that they think a lot of things, um, but that doesn't mean they're accurate. And I shared the studies today from all credible sources as to how we have no evidence of any of this. If we did, this would not be a drug that would be sitting, you know, on the shelf. It would be going to, um, it would be going to a randomized controlled trial, and it has not gone that far. Everything we have up to this point says this is not what that drug is for. I've been calling and emailing the Republican Party all day about this and other things. I got my mom to put something in the local party newsletter. Ask people to follow. Thank you. Um, we need to reinforce masks and social distancing. The mask not only protects you, it does protect other people. And you're better at just wear the damn surgical mask. Don't wear the cloth face mask. Please don't. We have the other masks available. There's enough. It's the N95s that we don't have enough of. The surgical masks are... Pl I can get surgical masks easier than I can get toilet paper on the outside here. So, um, please wear the right mask. Um, listen to the medical professionals. D you know, Dr. Fauci has it right, and it pisses me off that, you know, yes, talk about reopening the states, but talk about doing things responsibly. Do the social distancing. Right now, this should not be a, you should be angry at both parties, United we stand and divided we fall. And both sides are trying to divide this country right now. And this is not a freaking political topic. This is a health care topic. And we need people healthy. You're not going to have citizens to vote. And even Cuomo saying out in here in New York, oh, you know, there are going to be old people who die. Well, you know, maybe you should report to their family that they got sick in the first damn place. Um. I'm sure their family didn't appreciate the fact that uh, that was said because there were some people that weren't even notified. It was notated. This is where false documentation is a big problem. There were some people that this, that these facilities had claimed that they had notified, and they were never notified. They were expecting their family member to come home. So false documentation is not okay, and there will be ramifications to all of this there are going to be some shoes that fall over these situations which is why malpractice insurance is an even better idea right now because people are going to be so happy once the hospital opens back up um they are going to be demanding answers they are going to be demanding um to see their loved ones hospital records you know they're going to have questions especially once other people start to talk so there's going to be a lot of well, people are lawsuit happy, but if you give good quality care, patient families don't usually sue, but you can get wrapped up in other people's bullshit and that can tie you up also. So it's really important to have malpractice insurance. Edenville, Smallwood, Sanford dams are gone. What about Chapel Dam? Is it just overfilled? Did the Edenville Dam give out completely? Because I heard it, it was just like it's a capacity that it didn't break. But from looking at the water that I'm seeing, I mean, it looks like the Taquamanon Falls coming out of there. And those are very small dams. And I know Edenville, God, that lake was empty for a few years. Um, let's see, Patty Martinez from Reseda to West Hills and to Westlake Village moved all over. Hey guys. Yes, please learn policies and procedures. Do things by the book. Do things by Joint Commission standards. That is why those rules are in place, is to protect the patient. That's National Patient Safety 
goals, and you have OSHA to protect you. It is not okay to skirt around safety right now. This is how people get hurt. We would never skirt around, you know, we wouldn't use scaffolding that didn't have, you know, bars on it to, to keep people from falling, or we wouldn't use um, tethers to keep from falling off of, you know, skyscrapers when you're working on them. You wouldn't not use PPE and skirt around safety right now. That's not okay. Dow, <laughs> my daughter works inside Dow as an electrician. Um, when I did heating and cooling, we also worked inside Dow. And Dow has their own health unit. You can't even get a paper cut and go to your own doctor without going through Dow and their medical screening first. They are very strict. Um, and it, these things are in place for a reason. And skirting around your own rules is not okay. It's okay to voice concerns. I mean, you don't want to get demanding and violent and argumentative and create a huge scene. And I really did not. But I also let it be known that I wasn't going to stand for not taking care of things. I mean, the night, my last night there, I had just got done doing rounds and taking care of somebody else's patients. And I went downstairs to finally sit down and eat. And there was a page overhead for respiratory stat, which is <laughs> favorite, favorite page. And apparently they were paging the respiratory therapist and they weren't answering, like, because all we had were pagers. We didn't have phones to carry. And he was sleeping. And you know what happened? A ventilator stopped working. It just up and stopped. And it's a machine. It will happen. But you can't. You're not supposed to bag these patients. So I'm sure those nurses were upstairs scared to death. But, you know, I was asked about what happened on my way out the door by the nursing manager because they wanted to know what happened with the ventilator. And I'm like, I don't know. It was at the other end. It wasn't my patient. So I, I don't know. But what I do know is that my coworker was sleeping and that's why they couldn't get a hold of them. And, you know, most hospitals when you're in an intensive care unit you can't come back down and sit in the department and sleep you're not even supposed to be sleeping it's dereliction of duty um if, if people have been ref have been fired repeatedly for this but that's a patient safety issue that rt should have been stationed up in the icu you're just not allowed to leave like that you know when i was at hurley in flint if you had more than I think four vents you were locked in the unit you were not going anywhere. You, I, I used to bring my lunch up there with me, and that is where I sat until shift change when somebody would finally come relieve me. That's how that's supposed to be done, and those policies are in place for patient safety. Not so my coworker can go take a nap. And, you know, here I am new. There's a bunch of new people. We can't even find anybody to ask a question. They're like, oh, make sure you page. Number one, I am not used to using a damn pager system. I am used to picking up a phone and calling you. So I don't even know what the paging policy is. And when shit's going to hell in a handbasket, the last thing I want to be doing is trying to sit by a phone extension to page somebody who's not going to answer because they're sleeping. Um, I have a problem with that. And sorry to ruin it for them, but... That's not what we're at work to do. It's we're, we're not at work to go sit in the break room and play on our friggin' laptops. I mean, that's not appropriate. Um, you document your ass off. If you find something that's, you know, you, you don't need to throw anybody under the bus in your documentation. I couldn't even file a patient-related occurrence on anything because I wasn't... And that's when you have a situation where there's a change in patient status due to whether it be a mistake, a fault of a machine, or anything, but you can file an incident report from within the hospital that doesn't go on the patient chart so they can work on process improvement. I didn't even have access to that system to do that with. So I complained to who I could complain to, which was the supervisor and the director, and there was no changes that were made. Um, I know the nursing staff was getting ready to start filing some complaints about things when I left. So they were asking me who to contact about some situations. 
And I was more than happy to tell them because it's all about the patient. We are there for the patient. We are there to be safe, but we are there to keep that patient safe. And it is our responsibility. We are tasked with that. It is ethically and morally our responsibility to make sure that that patient is taken care of, whether or not they can answer for themselves or not. Um, their family's not there to advocate right now. We are their only advocate. So I am not okay with um, really lax patient care. I'm, I'm just not. Hey, let's see. The Rich Covered Illinois is part owner of test company in the labs that run the samples. Oh, that's... See, you're supposed to... <clears throat> In healthcare, if you have a conflict of interest or even a perceived conflict of interest, um, you need to disclose that before even speaking or trying to, you know, your, you know, if your hospital is in, and we do have this. We have a lot of other RTs that work um, for a companies like Hillrom, which they deal with hospital beds and other hospital equipment. But they don't have a say in who makes the decisions about what the hospital is um, going to use and purchase. And if they do, they notify the purchasing manager, hey, this is I'm probably not the best person to be making these decisions because it's a conflict of interest. So if these people have a uh, interest in companies like this, these things need to be shared transparency we do need transparency i have so much like z dog z dog is my influence i it even i had mentioned in one of the videos in the supporter tribe that my semi that my video went semi-viral and he was my influence he's like oh god i don't know how much i suggest that it could get you in trouble but you know it, we need to speak up and I just try to advocate and, you know, I do stand behind most of what, you know, he, what he stands for. I mean, we all have different political views, but he doesn't, you know, he expresses his and you know, when, you know, he has a, a personal opinion, he's transparent about it. Um, we let you know when it's our personal opinion over fact. And, uh, you know, he got buried and he got beat down in healthcare like 10 years ago. He was just, he, he just didn't want to do his job anymore. I mean, administration just sucks the life out of you and you don't even want to, you don't want to care for yourself, your patient or anybody else. And it makes it really, um, exhausting. And when you are in this for the patient and you can't care for them, it makes it really hard to do your job and it makes it very frustrating. Now I'm not there yet. This was my one and only experience with this type of situation. Um, there are things I get frustrated about, but um, I don't, uh, I had a good relationship with the doctor. It was just one doctor that we had an issue with and it was not me, it was everybody. <laughs> she just would go through and order every respiratory treatment on every freaking patient, no matter if it was indicated or not, and just overworked the respiratory department. And that's also a waste of resources. So we were trying to stop that. But it wasn't just one therapist or one person. It was, you know, a lot of people had a problem with that particular doctor. But overall, when I was at UMC, it's a level one trauma center, like the only one in the Southwest region. If I could see that my patient needed to make some changes, I would run the blood work. I would go talk to the doctor. X, Y, and Z is going on. This is the patient history, blah, blah, blah. Do you mind if I make these changes? Sure, go ahead. Because respiratory was respected there because we earned that respect. And here, it's not like that. We are just button pushers. They don't respect anybody. When you do bedside rounds, everybody in, who's involved, the the case manager, the social worker, PT, respiratory, pharmacy, they're all at the bedside going patient by patient talking about these things. And that's not the way it is here. It's just the attending preaching to their residents and then that's it. Nobody else is involved with any recommendations or anything. It's like the rest of us don't exist. Um, 
And that's not the way it works at most hospitals across the country these days. Even the little hospital that I was at out in central Michigan, um, out at McLaren, they had two therapists on staff. We were still at bedside rounds. Um, even if we were doing the teledoc, because they had the little robot doctor, if they weren't going to be on site, but we still did rounds and you, you better be there. You know, they weren't optional. They were mandatory. Everybody was involved because everybody is part of that patient's care and we're all a team working together. And that's what I'm used to. And I've been all over Michigan. I've been to several places in Texas and that's how it is. Um, this is not okay out here the way this is being done. This is not about patient safety. And this hospital wasn't um, meant to, and it wasn't set up for that. Moving out of NYC, I've noticed lawlessness and slacking in too many arenas. Yeah. It's like integrity is doing the right thing even when nobody is looking. And it seems like just like those cops in Georgia with that um, Ahmad Arbery murder um they didn't have integrity they weren't doing the right thing when nobody else was looking and these things are coming out and slacking in too many areas is not okay i'm trying to teach cheryl i really am people sick of yeah they're losing their damn minds they are and we need to be out doing stuff Yes, I would love to turn out some awesome respiratory therapists. I have my staff at Hurley Medical Center in Flint to thank for teaching me everything that I know in respiratory care and to have standards. They're in the middle of Flint. There was murder capital when I worked there, but we didn't slack on patient safety. Um, it wasn't an excuse. We were held accountable, and we were held accountable for our charting, and we had changed over to live charting and using the electronic medical record when I was there. So it was a change for all of us to get used to not using a paper chart. I mean, right now it'd be great to use a freaking paper chart. It would save a lot of time and I would be able to focus more on patient care. But um, I was trained properly and I would really hope that other facilities do take pride when they have, and UMC had students and they did it right with the clinics. I really wish I would have went to a college like that, that really put that much effort into their students because um, they did it right. They really did. And the students were learning a lot in a trauma center. And that's honestly where they need to be. There's a no mask revolution happening. Oh my freaking God, you know, I should be able to hand out DNR waivers in places like that. It's like, a, yeah, some statement people are making and suddenly everyone has a medical condition. That pre yeah, I've not seen very many medical conditions that prevent people from wearing a mask. I mean, it's like windy across the entire country. Phoenix can use some wind, though. It's, it gets so damn hot there that any kind of breeze is nice. Although it's not nice getting sandblasted either. Some places are not reporting data, so we don't know how bad. Yeah, we don't. And honestly, we have to wait for the testing to come through um, and even accurate testing. There's so much. This has not been going on for very long, folks. I mean, it might seem like it because we've been locked up in the damn house, but we are still waiting for results and to see, you know, there are people who are either being reinfected or relapsing. We don't even know what to call it. From their original first positive test. Um, <clears throat> so we don't know. We don't even have answers. So to be running around without a mask right now in public is really stupid. Um, I would wear it, but wear it right. You know, wearing it on trails is kind of ridiculous. But if you're going to be out in public and there are this many people going to be out reopening in the, you know, with all these states, wear it, wear it. You know, there's people starting fights in the store because managers are throwing people out for not wearing a mask. It's my right. No, it's not. You have a choice to go shop at that store and that store owner has the right to tell you, 
and refuse you entry if you're not going to abide by their rules. And their rules are wear the damn mask, not throw freaking fruit at people and scream and throw a temper tantrum, you entitled asshole. Sorry. That's not how it works. You know, those people have the right to refuse you service. They don't have to let you in the store. Just like, you know, they don't have, you know, like if you're raising a disturbance, they have the right. The It was in a, a Trader Joe's and they wound up calling the cops on her. I can't believe you're calling the cops on a law-abiding citizen for not wearing a mask. Really, lady? And even the a, a customers were saying you're selfish as fuck. You know, you're you're just acting re- ridiculous right now. Um, if it's the uh, store's rule, then you need to follow it if you want to enter their establishment. That's how that works. I'm from Gaylord. If you wait outside, you see people coming north. They stop here for food. No mass, 89% of the time. And see, yeah, no spike in cases. Wait for it. You are correct, Barbara. Just wait a couple weeks. Yep. Angry at both parties. You need to lay blame at the feet of both parties. They are doing this emotion, this freaking blame game again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and that is solving nothing. The Democrats have spent four years wasting time and money trying to get Trump out of office, screaming and hollering to divide the country along party lines. Trump's not doing any better with using the media to provoke them and to provoke the media. And what the fuck is that solving? Not a damn thing. Stop it. All of you damn children, knock it off and get along and figure it out because this is not bipartisanship. This is not. This is hate, plain and simple, on both sides. They can both look at the mirror and point fingers at themselves because they're all to blame. I haven't seen a single one trying to bring the country together right now. Where the hell is JFK when we need him? Oh, there's going to be a lot of major lawsuits. Somebody said last night that they've already seen, there's already been attorney messages on TV about um, lawsuits. And, you know, this is this is going to be bad afterwards. The courts are going to be clogged up with uh, lawsuits over this. You guys are very welcome. Do you think if there were health care unions at some things we are seeing... There are health care unions, but the representation sucks. And so there's a union at the hospital where I'm at. Are they representing the health care workers very well? No. Is it the health care workers' fault who voted them in there? Yes, because they have a choice to elect their leaders. And a lot of them do not participate in the votes. I've been involved with several unions, and several people do not participate not participating in a vote is just as bad as not making an educated vote because all those people could make a difference. I just feel that they don't, you know, yeah, they don't want to have to choose, but, you know, there is a choice. There are other candidates between Republican and Democrat. There are other parties, you know. <laughs> Start making a stand and voting for those people instead of going with Republican or Democrat. Start researching your candidates. Um, there's a reason that those people don't affiliate themselves with those parties. They are viable options, and we need to quit acting like just Republican and Democrat is the only thing that's out there, because it's not. My husband's dialysis nurse and text. They have to use one in 95 a week. Yeah, and that's understandable if it's not contaminated. But where I'm at, it's like a fight to even get one. And you have to, like, show that it is visibly soiled before and, like, deteriorating before they're even going to give you a new one. The plan should be to find a way to sterilize the masks that we have to keep a stash up and um, not run out. We knew this was happening, and sterilizing those masks is an option. Why are we not doing it? There are companies that are making a living coming in, sterilizing the masks and returning them back to the facility. MSU is doing it in Michigan for the hospitals. Um, There's no excuse for this. There is not. There are options to 
build up our stash. We have one for nursing. It's a good idea to join. Yeah. It's just, yes, I was sleeping. I took a nap. I needed it. I've been doing paperwork all day. If, you know, when you start the whole a, a, a credentialing process for a facility, and at least through the state of Texas, it's a little bit easier. They're just looking for a background check. I don't need to go run out and try and find a place to go do a drug test right now during the middle of a freaking pandemic, which is great. Um, because it's not exactly easy in New Jersey, but it can be done. It's just a hassle. So I'm just waiting on background checks and stuff like that. Um, yes, please just give out better information. I would love, you know, I, that's what I want to share is information, resources to give out accurate information. So people have legitimate and credible places to find it. Not, is this doctor credible? Cause he's got a YouTube, you know, there are ways to find out, um, a lot of, like, the doctors for MCRIT and POMCRIT, they end in .org, um, not .com or anything else. Very, very valid. Um, there's a few doctors on YouTube, like the one that I follow on MedCram. I mean, when you look at his history and his credentials and the fact that the doctor's education um, group a CME that they are giving away credit to complete, you know, this guy's material, more than likely a pretty credible source. Um, and that's where all the information came from on all the drugs that I've shared up to date. I have seen nothing new on MedPram. Um, it is wordy. It's hard for the non-medical person to understand. Why do it? No wonder I'm sweating my ass off. I go from hot and cold, hot and cold. Like right now I'm not I'm not, I'm not dying of freezing my butt off right now. Um, but you, you, you have to look at your sources and unless you've been trained on where to find this material, it, it's really hard. And there's so much misinformation out there right now with social media that it's really easy to come across doctors who promote zinc and quinine and hydroxychloroquine, um, and send letters to the president that this works. I mean, my brain hurts sometimes looking at this. Toxic environments that do no, yeah. Toxic environments are not good and we need to speak up. We just need to speak up because doing the same thing and, ex and expecting a different result every time is the definition of insanity. And if we go back, if any of us go back to situations that are toxic, that are unhelpful, that we've been demanding change for years, but then not doing anything about it, then you have no reason to complain. Um, it's important to speak up. We are not gonna have this platform again. We are not going to have the voice that we have as a United Nation to speak up for change that we need to see happen we will fall right back into the same habits, if not worse, when this is over, if people do not continue to demand change. Now is the time for patriotism, and patriotism is not showing up on the Capitol steps with weapons. No. It's having a love for one's country and its citizens. Those people are not respecting other citizens. They're intimidating them. So we need to be patriots right now. Braveheart. Think about Braveheart and Kevin Costner. The best doctor I had left his practice because of the bullshit. That, see, that's what's happening. He That's what Z-Dog did. He left and went on his own. He went rogue because he wasn't happy. He wasn't able to give the care that he knew that needed to be given. And so he started a movement. And he's been doing this for 10 years now. And he's happy. And it's the best thing he ever did. Um, he's still just a phone call away. Yep. Hey, Karen. What's it like for bathing, oral hydration, and changes those patients on it? See, um, honestly, for me and the nurses I have worked with, but this is me, I have no problem going in that room and doing oral care and doing my job as long as I have the protective equipment to do it. 
the nursing staff are is doing a lot of respiratory work right now. And yes, it's to limit the amount of people in the room. But at the same time, it's also because my counterparts are too scared to go in a room or they're too lazy, one or the other. I'm going with lazy also since they're sleeping. Um, doing a vent check from outside of the room when there are buttons that you need to push on that ventilator to perform maneuvers to chart values um, and then falsifying that documentation. Um, not checking filters that need to be changed that are causing high pressures. Um, that's all a joint commission violation. I don't have a problem doing it. It's really not that bad, but the oral care isn't getting done. When I go in and I have a patient's lip like peeling off and like an eighth of a thickness of skin all across their whole lip because their lips haven't been moisturized, and I have no supplies to go do that, I got a problem. Um, I can't take care of a patient's mouth, which is part of the ventilator VAP um, a protocol, which is a ventilator-acquired pneumonia. We're supposed to keep the mouth clean to reduce the bacteria. Um, it's not happening. So just like basic standards of care. When I have their tongue peeling off in a layer, that's a problem. I'm in there, I'll go through two or three oral care kits on some patients just trying to get the skin out of their mouth that's all dead that nobody has bothered to scrub. It's not that bad. And if I can do it safely, I know that it can be done. Oh, no, I'm not sick. I was sleeping. I took a nap, so my eyes are all puffy because I was sleeping, and my sinuses are backed up because of the weather here. I had sinus surgery back in 16. Yeah, and it was like the worst experience of my life. And even after the surgery, I am still congested, which is why I would really love to go back to the desert. So my sinuses quit swelling, and I need to actually take my sinus medicine. But, yeah, I'm not sick. I'm just congested. Um, I have a lot of sinus issues. Hurley Medical Center represent. Yes, ma'am. You guys are awesome there. Since you've been exposed to COVID, do you need... Um, in the state of Texas, the governor is requiring that if we are not essential workers and you come back home, you need to sign a waiver that you will keep your ass at home for non-essential activities for 14 days, yes. So, yes, the answer is yes. And would I be irresponsible if I didn't do that? Absolutely. So, you know, even I haven't really been anywhere here that's not essential. So even I'm exposed to it. So I even quarantine here um, just to not put anybody at risk. We're not out in the middle of town, you know, doing whatever. We're keeping our butts at the hotel I stay in my room. I try not to expose anybody. But everybody here, has, there's a lot of soldiers here. Um, there are a few regular customers. Um, but for the most part, it's hospital employees and soldiers. So we're all pretty much exposed. But we're all wearing masks. We're all doing what's socially responsible. Um, it's very important. So when you travel from areas that are not within the state of Texas or you're traveling from certain cities that have been affected. Like when I came back from Seattle, I had to stay at home until I came out here. Um, but that's the right thing to do. That is the right thing to do. I'm hoping that the reinfection relapse folks are truly not going to, I don't know, man, that's really scary because I was talking to somebody today that had said that there was like a third relapse or reinfection of an individual and I do want to share, or I would like to follow their story because um, that's really important to know this information because if that's a possibility, um, we, uh, we need to really know what's going on with that. So it's really important to not um, be lax in our standards. And we call it universal precautions, like at the hospital. We wear gloves, you know, we treat everybody like they're potentially infectious, you know, that's like 
all fluids are potentially infectious. And that's standard precautions, universal precautions. You do the same thing for everybody. And that's kind of the blanket idea with the masks. I mean, I don't fully support the whole mask idea because people are not doing it right. And I would rather that you not do it at all than do it wrong. But to go out and have no mask parties is not socially responsible. Freedom comes with responsibility. Freedom is never free. People have sacrificed their lives and it does come with a responsibility. And you do need to be socially responsible right now and keep other people safe because we don't know. Uh, what about the guy who was killed in Flint by the family of a ridiculous person? Yeah, father of eight. I did hear about that. That was absolutely freaking terrible. There were people fighting on the side of the road in El Paso. I'm sure it was due to like bad driving and road rage incidents because um, they do happen there. People do not know how to drive. But attacking somebody with violence over not wearing a mask or asking somebody to wear a mask is absolute bullshit. And throwing an adult temper tantrum to the point where it takes somebody's freaking life over a goddamn mask. Are you kidding me right now? Grow up. These people are entitled. No shoes, no shirt, no mask, no service. Exactly. I like that, Jennifer. We need to make signs and donate them to these people. Have to go to the dentist tomorrow and be a part. Um... The lady I did the interview with, Melissa, she had to go to the dentist just after our interview and her dentist was so nervous and he had nobody to hold her tongue that it was all cut up and it wasn't the dentist's fault. You know, she's nervous. I hate the dentist. I have a lot of dental issues myself. Um, but the dentist, I've heard from several dentists that are scared to death to go back to work right now. Dental hygienists who are scared to death to go back to work right now with very good reason. You are blowing air into somebody's mouth and aerosolizing stuff. And you definitely, it's very hard to do dental work in a freaking face shield that is not easy to see through. You know, it's very hard to do your job. And now you're going to have light reflecting off of it. And you can't have the patient wear a mask like you would in a hospital if they're in a room with aerosol particles. Um, so yeah, it's very scary. Um, if you do not need to go for, in, if it's not e an emergency, I would not put yourself or your dentist at that risk right now. They would greatly appreciate you staying home. <laughs> Please. Hydroxychloroquine is not going to save any of you. Lady I spoke to this morning and said there might be one other person in the waiting room. They don't like to keep people waiting. At the urgent care clinic that I went to in El Paso, you had to wait outside in your car. They would call you when it was when you were allowed to come in, which is more comfortable anyway. Crashed earlier after being woke up at 4.30 and having a two-year-old who wanted to stay awake. Yeah, I think all of our schedules are completely screwed up right now. I mean, my time zones, I had a really hard time when I moved out to El Paso getting used to Mountain Standard Time. I've been out there... Three years now, June of 17 is when I moved out there. So just about three years and I finally got used to it. Now I'm back in the freaking Eastern time zone and I'm like, send me back to the mountain time. <laughs> I really like it out West. A lot of people ask me why I stay out there and it's because of the people. Um, it's a different way of life out there. It's very relaxed. If you can't tell from the news, people don't take things seriously enough. But the way of life is just chill. People are just relaxed down there. Um, you don't have a lot of this chaos that you see up here. And the culture is very loving and very supportive and very caring. They're very respectful um, of their state and of the people in it for the most part. You know, yeah, there's always a few bad apples. But, you know, like in El Paso, there's not a, a very large homeless community. There's homeless in certain areas, but... Not like I see here in New York. And it's very sad out here. It it, it really is. Um, I would at least wish that these people were somewhere warm if they're going to be out on the streets. Court here, I'm thinking that they can travel. And see, Whitmer, this is what she didn't want, is people traveling up from the city to go up freaking north and drag their coronavirus up there. And that's why she didn't reopen the whole state. 
Y'all can't freaking listen. PFO procedure coming up. Not thrilled about this at all. Well, at least they'll have thoroughly sterilized the operating room. You can bet. So you should be a lot safer than going to the dentist, to be truthfully honest, because you're not doing aerosol generating procedures. Um, they really go through those operating rooms and clean the hell out of those. They don't even know how to treat a flag anymore. You got that right. They don't even know. My sister. My sister is a Iraqi freedom veteran. She served after 9-11. Went over. She enlisted in August of 2001 and went over. We lost a couple people that we went to school with. Um, one was very traumatic to her. It was one of our classmates um she about ran him over when he was thrown from the vehicle um it was very traumatic for her but she posted on her facebook today that she was listening to the radio and they were talking about people cleaning out the cabins and having their backyard barbecues and doing all this shit this weekend and not one freaking mention about what memorial day actually represents and that's those that are fallen and that we lost and that's disgusting to even think that a radio station host is more worried about people cleaning out their cabin and doing all these things and not remembering what Memorial Day is actually for. And that we can't even go to these gravesides and do the Memorial Day parades to commemorate those fallen soldiers and the lives that were lost. Unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. Um... I'm disgusted. She was disgusted. And I'm surprised that she didn't write a very well-educated letter because she's got a master's degree herself. Um, and she's a, she's a combat veteran. And uh, she served eight years. Um, and then she got medically retired or medically discharged because she was considered non-deployable. Um, and that really bummed her out because she really wanted to further her career in the military. So she was not happy that that happened. But... She's doing good now, so um, Braveheart, yes, Kevin Costner. I'm sorry, I don't. Yeah, you see how much I watch movies and know my actors. Braveheart, yes. Thank you for the correction, Christine. I don't understand how Pence is in charge of COVID team, not NIH, CDC, or exactly. That's a great point, Shonda. Like, if you look at Taiwan, they handed over the reins to their institutes of health that manage all this stuff. You take the government out of it, and you give it over to the centers that handle these things. And you listen to the doctors who are in charge of this. Um, you don't make this a political statement. The wrong people are in the wrong positions. You are absolutely correct and that we need to advocate for change for that people are getting hired for positions they have no business in yeah just like i heard yesterday that that asshole who showed up on the capitol steps with whitmer hanging from the american flag on a noose is running for office great that's exactly who we need to represent us i heard some folks have traveled to Smoky Mountain area. I think they should quarantine for two weeks upon return. Pictures show no one wearing masks and crowding together. They are reopening the state of Tennessee. Um, that's where my daughter's father and stepmom live, just outside of the um, Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg area. My husband was vented for almost a month. His tongue turned white. The bed sore on his bottom freaking kidding me see that's another thing that's not happening is the patients aren't getting rotated you are supposed to rotate position every two hours to alleviate pressure sores that is a standard of care when we have patients come in to from the nursing home with stage four and unstageable pressure ulcers that is from laying in the same goddamn position all day they quit putting people on backboards like we had when I was at Hurley, towards the end, I think I left in 2012, and 
we had to get people off backboards like ASAP. They were we had to evaluate them and get them off of backboards because being on that backboard causes pressure ulcers within 20 minutes. So we needed to get people off of them because we were not causing pressure ulcers with a backboard. And um they didn't just get to lay there. And these folks in the nursing home their loved ones can't come in and see them right now. And the pressure ulcer on your husband is inexcusable. I'd love to know what, I, you know what, Bobby, I would be filing a complaint. Um, there's no reason for that man to have a huge pressure ulcer. Three centimeters deep is pretty deep. Um, his tongue was white because it wasn't taken care of. He wasn't being taken care of, and that is a patient safety issue, and I would file a complaint with the Joint Commission about that. Um, that's lack of care and lack of concern, and this is the problem I have. Oh. I am not getting an NG tube. You are really freaking funny. I hate NT suctioning. <laughs> I had my thyroid removed and had an amazing surge in the aftercare sucked. The nurse took my blood by sticking a needle in my arms, swirling it around it. Oh my God, it took longer for my arm to heal than my neck. Ugh, some people don't need to be in healthcare. This is why checkoffs are important. U of M's a good hospital. If I were to go to any hospital in the state of Michigan to get anything done right now, it would be U of M. That's, to be truthfully honest, that's where I used to go get my daughter's rheumatology care. Um, I, anytime she needed any specialist, I went to U of M. Good hospital. Not that Hurley isn't, but if I were to, you know, to be concerned about all of the things that I'm concerned about, U of M would still be my top choice of hospitals in the state of Michigan. Sorry, I'm a Go Blue fan. I am not a state fan. I'm not a Sparty. I'm ready to get off blood thinner for monthly cycle reasons, but not ready to jump into this frying pan. Oh, this is going to be a shit show. Hey, Vicky. Yeah, U of M follows precautions. Super duper. They have protocols in place. They have resources. They have, I believe, ECMO there. If I'm not, yeah, because we airlifted kids down there to be treated for ECMO and stuff. If you want to be anywhere, it's freaking U of M. COVID test. Oh, that's um, another thing about the place where I may be going. Um, they have on-site testing for employees who want to be tested for COVID. It's not withheld. It's not discouraged. Um, they do encourage you to report and self-report. So, a completely opposite environment. Completely. When they stop the subway, they remove... Th I had a homeless person stop me outside today and ask me if she were to go to any city, where should she go? And I didn't have a good answer for her. Because the homeless situation in America right now in any major city is tragic. Um, they're booting them off the street in San Francisco. You know, we have nowhere to put people. And it's even thinner now because they're trying to socially distance people. Um, my lips are just tore up from wearing that N95. And they did, and you can't wipe your lips off when you're wearing the mask. So they just peel. Um, kind of like my patients. So I know how they feel. Imagine all that caking up day after day after day and then getting stuck to your lip and peeling off. And then pulling off more lip. And not having Vaseline to put on there to soften it up. Or a tube of chapstick from the family. Yeah, but the homeless situation, I feel really bad because they're trying to socially distance them. And now we have nowhere to put them because they that's where they slept was on the subway. Um, but this is a problem in America. And if we revamped health care, we would have all this extra money to sink into the infrastructures that we need to sink in, into. And that's helping these homeless situations. Two thousand freaking dollars. You know, I pay less than a thousand dollars for my rent, utilities, and everything in the west side of El Paso. 
And that's including my garbage, my electricity. My rent's only like 790 bucks a month. And I have a two-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath townhouse in a very nice area. A studio apartment, $2,000. That's fucking un unreal. Take me back west. Exactly. Lived in Phoenix, 2002. It's time to go back, Michelle. You are in the land of the south of Michigan. I don't even like using that O word. Um, I lived in Ohio, <clears throat> Striker, for a little while. <clears throat> There's nothing out there, and they tax your ass to death. Um, in Ohio, you have a state tax, you have a city tax, you have a local tax, you have a school tax, and if you work in a different school district than you live, you're paying a school tax there too. By the time you get done being taxed, you don't have a freaking paycheck. I haven't been inside. I really, I've been inside of a one Walmart and a Walgreens. That is it. Everything else has been delivered to me. It's not the possibility that I think it was not the operating room that makes me nervous. What is making you nervous? It's the people because they are screening the employees. Um, they do have screening policies in place, checking temperatures. I know it's not guaranteed, but it's better than nothing. Um, but you got to remember, most of these people have been off work because surgeries have been canceled. So they've been at home. Battle Creek isn't putting up flags at the Fort Custer Cemetery this year because of COVID. I'm pissed and disgusted. Yeah, they can easily socially distance to put the flags up. Yes, they freaking can. That's disgusting. I'm just, I'm beside myself over our veterans. Hey, Flo. Oh, for those of you who did not see my post, the Flo Nightingale, I'd like you to go follow and like that and share that post. This is to self-report about if your facility is low on PPE and where you are so we can take these numbers to people who can help. And it's a coordinated effort. Um, what this individual is doing is keeping it anonymous because we are being retaliated against for speaking up. And there have been people reprimanded and even fired for putting their hospital's name on a donation list for face masks and other things that we need just because it makes the hospital look bad. Um, that's not okay. This is not about your freaking image right now. This is about the health and welfare of your employees and your, and your patients. It protects everybody. So please follow the Flo Nightingale. Um, it's on my RT says what page. I did boost the post to get it out in the healthcare community. I'm getting a hell of a response from it actually. Um, because I keep getting notifications of how many people it's reached, which is great. But in Michigan, you guys are great at making things go viral. So please share that. Um, what they're doing is awesome. And they're making it to where it's not risky for the, the individual that's reporting and to get that information out there um, so we can take that to our leaders um, and go, hey, you know, this is this is not acceptable. We need to come up with a better plan. That happened to my ex's dad. He wasn't going and checking on his dad, and he was his dad's state-appointed caregiver. Needless to say, his dad became a ward of the state in a nursing home. Come on, he died. In that nursing home alone. So sad and disappointed in my ex. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my gosh. Blue and gold all the way. Yes, I am glad I'm getting out of there. I was really worried with the way that I was not getting sleep and having to switch the shifts back and forth and not being able to get rest. That does weaken your immune system. You need to get proper sleep. Um, you need to make sure that you're well rested. And if you're not, it, you, it, it puts you at higher risk. And then you're also more apt to make mistakes because you're not thinking things through clearly and following I am very systematic and I have a certain way of doing things and I do it that way. So I do it the same way every time, no matter what facility that I am in and I am practicing good habits and I don't deviate from that. I don't like to deviate from that routine because then I get screwed up about where I was at in the process and I forget. So I highlight everybody knows me like seriously, everybody at UMC knows that. Oh, Sorry, I'm reaching, but they know that they can find me in my cup of pens and highlighters because everything is color-coded. 
you know, I do my oxygen rounds in green because, oh, I, yeah, oxygen tanks are green. You know, I highlight when I'm done with the, you know, but I can visually see I am systematic in my approach because it prevents mistakes. And I learned that from my coworkers at Hurley who trained me. Um, I became very anal retentive in that, you know, and I have nothing but great things to say about the RTs who have helped me along the way. I've learned from bad RTs as well. I've learned what not to do. So it's always a learning process, but I do things in, in, in that manner to prevent mistakes from being made. Grand Rapids, they can get eight meals a day and shelter. They have a nice set. Oh, they do. Good, 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 good. I'm glad. That's fantastic. Because it's the first positive thing I've seen about anybody homeless. People keep saying the homeless are mentally ill people who won't accept help. That's not a fair assessment. No, some are veterans who don't want to be associated with the public anymore. They've been so disgusted that they just don't want to be attached to society. They enjoy being a nobody on the street because how many homeless people do you really stop and talk to? I had a lady, like I said, I was talking to outside today, but nobody takes the time of day to talk to people and listen to their stories. And I do want to hear them. I do want to hear because I do share them with other people because it's important to hear them. Um, Durango County rent 1200 tough on working class people. Hell yeah, that is. How is a single parent supposed to work on minimum wage and afford that kind of freaking rent and feed their family and get car insurance and pay their bills? Oh, that's a new one. That's a new drug. I'm overthinking and I'm wary of being in contact with other people's germs. Yes, just be careful of what you touch in the lobby, but just know that they are going to great lengths at these hospitals, most of these hospitals, especially U of M, to keep people safe. Um, don't overthink it because then you're going to stress yourself out and you don't need to be an anxious wreck. I don't want that for you. When I was in Phoenix, it was cheap. Two bedroom, two bath pool. Paid six twenty five. dollars Yeah, see? Come out west. Come back out west. Fairly new centers on intestinal tract. I can get off the meds. 33000 every eight weeks. I don't pay. Jesus Christ. Hey there, Lori. Yeah, not too much new news. Just a bunch of a, a paperwork being filled out today. Um, I got to get on my website for my PTSD page and see what's even going on with that. There's so much going on that I actually needed this break right now. And I'm very thankful for it. I mean, I do have a cushion, um, but I don't want to be off work for more than a week. But uh, I am chasing COVID at this point in time. Um and naps. I chase a lot of naps. But there's just so much to do and I have so many ideas, but I've been watching. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with everything and Midland County, the hospital had to be evacuated. Holy crap, April. There's like nowhere else to go besides Bay City. Shit. Utah State Hospital make under just 12. Thank heavens for my husband's construction. Oh my God, that's not I'm heading west, going to get a covered wagon. Make sure you don't go through the badlands with that covered wagon. It can take you eight days to get around it. If you've never been out to the badlands, when you get there, you understand <laughs> very quickly why it's called the badlands, especially if you're visiting Sturgis in the middle of August. Um, it is hotter than hell, and it just opens up into this insane crevice and rock formations that are completely impassable by anything other than an animal with slithering capabilities and eight legs. Um, it is amazing to look at. It would be great to see when it's not hotter than hell outside or maybe in a car with air conditioning, um, not on the back of a motorcycle. But, uh, it took eight days just to get around that when they came across it. It's pretty freaking amazing to see it because it's like, it's amazing. It's about as amazing as the Grand Canyon, just not as big of a hole in the ground. Um, but, it, you know, it's, there's kind of like a hole in the ground and up and around and all sorts of these craggy rock formations that are just like, holy crap. I mean, if you ever get a chance to get out there, go. Take your family and go to national parks, man. 
That's the way to go. The hell with freaking Disney World. Your kids don't need another god dang ride. They need family time and seeing stuff like this. I just kept track of what foods. Oh, okay, that's for the Crohn's. The e oh, so it did break. Oh, Jesus criminy. This is so sad. I feel so sad for my hometown. That should be the name of your book, Chasing COVID. Yeah. Um, man. There's a lot of us out here that are just burned out and need to take care of ourselves. And here's the thing. Us healthcare workers are getting exhausted and we do need a break and we do need to tap out and get rest and let the next group come out. But there's not that many respiratory therapists in the country. So if you want a good profession, go to respiratory therapy school. Um, get your bachelor's degree because it's a very, very decent career and we need more people. We need good people. I don't, we are short in El Paso on respiratory therapists. I don't know where they're graduating, where they're going after graduation, but they're not staying there. My girlfriend wanted me to ask, we have cloth mask and one N95 mask. She has a doc appointment tomorrow. I don't know if you think the doc would. No, I don't think any doctor in their right mind would give her crap for wearing an N95 mask. I would give her crap for wearing a cloth mask over an N95 mask. I would wear the N95, but wear it properly and don't touch it. Don't keep taking it off. Don't keep screwing with it. If you don't have surgical masks, wear the N95, but definitely the N95 over a cloth mask. Yeah, I use a lot of... I have a favorite... My... Where is my Blistex? I use it. They actually just finally came in the freaking mail. I ordered it. It's blue. It's a lip moisturizer, and I love it because it tastes like lemons. And it's done probably, yep, it rolled on the floor. But it's complete moisture. But my lips are always sealed with something, and they're always like this. I'm constantly licking them and fiddling with them. It's a nervous habit. Um, I've broken a lot of nervous ticks over the years on my own but uh I love my blue blistex and I have to order it online and it's got SPF in it but it's lemony flavored and it's moisture it's not got the um it's not waxy like of um chapstick is and I like it a lot better but it only came in the four packs that you get in the checkout at Walmart and I don't like anything else in the four pack so I order like a 12 pack of this and use it. But um yeah, my lips are always uh always doing this. I'll just hover and not touch anything. Kind of like the toilet seat, hover, just just hover. <laughs> if you don't need to be in a place, just don't go in. You're going to be okay. I I wouldn't worry too much about surgical procedures at this point in time. But um yeah, that's kind of what's going on right now, and guys. I'm just waiting on my next assignment um Hopefully I'll get some answers in the next couple days. They, you know, they really wanted me to start by the 21st. So, I mean, that's only a couple days away. So hopefully by Friday at the latest, um, I'll be out to my destination, which I've become like the Airbnb and hotel queen of researching places to go. So it shouldn't be too hard, but I definitely would prefer an Airbnb over a hotel. Um, out in Laredo, I doubt I would have to worry about three different stories of people like I do out here. There would just be, and I, and I know the Airbnb folks could really use some business right now because a lot of them are hurting. Um, they went into, uh, the market of renting out places and making them really nice in order to make rental income. And now everything's being canceled, so they could really use it. And I would be a lot more comfortable if I could cook. But if I'm back in Texas, I'm just going to be eating barbecue and tacos every day. So um, the drone squat, what kind is it? Uh, it's Blistex Complete Moisture. It's here. I'll make sure. Actually, I got the boxes in the drawer. I got my stash. When I hoard things, I hoard things. It looks like this. And it's lemony flavored, and I love it. it. Tastes like lemonade, and it doesn't have. It's got dimethicone. 
octinoxate. Yeah, there's not a bunch of um, wax in it. There actually, I don't think is any wax. Really, there is microclistaline wax, which is not the typical wax that you get in a um, moisture product for the lips. It's usually like carnauba wax or something, and I don't like that feeling on my lips because I wind up wiping it off. Um, so I'm constantly like moisturizing my lips and I will go through a tube of this like very, very quickly, partially because it tastes good. It's funny with the chapstick because when I was a kid, my, my mom used to give my sister the mint chapstick and she would eat it. And now, you know, we all like laugh now because, uh, I mean, we would be in the car and my sister would be like, mom, can I use a chapstick? And my mom would hand back her chapstick and she would ask for it back and she'd get it back and my sister would have eaten it. So now she likes her certain chapstick flavors and, you know, like now that you have like the lip glosses that are edible and stuff like that, it kind of solves her problem of eating chapstick. <laughs> but she used to be the chapstick eater when we were children. It was great. Um, we laugh about things, you know, she's doing the RV life and living, you know, in a chasing, um, I'm sure she'll be doing hurricane cleanup in North Carolina very soon. But that's what they went into business for. They sold their racetrack in Midland County, which I'm sure right now they are pretty fucking happy that they did. Because with all that rain, they used to have to row a boat around like turn three. And they would lose a lot of money every year with the rain. Um, sometimes insurance wouldn't cover it because, you know, only you know, like they wouldn't hit the limit of how much rain would have to fall, but they would lose a lot of money. So it's really good that they're doing that now for themselves because now they're making money off of natural disaster weather instead of losing it. And her efforts are a lot more uh, productive. And I just hated watching what happened to them the past few years with the rains in Michigan. I work for Hilton. I'm, oh, Michelle, thank you. I didn't know they had them. I'm, I'm here at Penn Station, so I'm actually at a Hilton right now, but to my knowledge, there aren't no kitchenettes here. I would love to keep staying at the Hilton because they've treated us very well here, and you can thank your employer for me. I'm going to write them a wonderful letter when I get done here. Um, my housekeeper's a sweetheart. But uh, being out in New York, in, you know, I'm usually there's like even a microwave in the room. I'm lucky to even have a mini fridge. They do have a microwave downstairs in the common lobby, but I don't really want to heat up my lobster and mussels in the lobby and make it smell like fish. So um, maybe I'll do that later when everybody's in sleep and not in the lobby. Um, Michelle, I'll definitely probably be getting a hold of you. I'll be heading out to Laredo. So if you know of anything in Laredo, let me know. Um, I like to give continued business to places that have been decent to me. Um, I do. Oh, my purple stuff came. So everybody, you know, I was bitching about my hair the other night. Totally non-COVID related, but I wound up buying this wonderful product for my hair. Silicon mix off of Amazon. This stuff here was cheap, and my hair is soft as hell. That's awesome. And then I bought Caracolor, the purple conditioner dye. So now I'm not going to be frying my hair, dyeing it. And for the times when I don't have to continue to dye it when I've reached my color, there's a clarifying conditioner. So I will permanently have soft hair, which is completely doing its own thing right now. Um... This is my natural hair. It's usually a lot longer. I had chopped a bunch of it off. It was down to here, but it was dying and I fried it when I bleached it. And I'm just kind of starting over, just giving my hair some fresh stuff to do. But if I'm going to an area with humidity, this is going to be my new look. <laughs> because no matter how much I straighten my hair with humidity, this is what I'm going to get. So scrub, a scrub hat's going to be nice. <laughs> To just cover the mop on my head. It's going to be a whole new fashion statement pretty soon. But my hair is actually very soft. I didn't put anything in it. And I usually can't get my fingers through it when it's curly. So I love promoting products that work well. What I really miss is the bounce dryer bar for the dryer. That thing worked really well and kept my clothes static free. 
and I didn't have dryer sheets hanging out of my legs, and then they got rid of the dryer bar. They always get rid of things. That's why I hoard things. They get rid of shit that I like, and then I don't have it. So I hoard stuff because I know it's not going to last. I don't call it Murphy's Law. I call it Misty's Law because it's just what happens to me. Um, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm just kind of chilling out, waiting to find out what I'm doing next. I'm really not anxious about it now that I know what I'm dealing with with a COVID and a PPE and what to expect. It's really... I it's going to be weird going back to normal patients and normal job and not dealing with COVID all the time. Um, it's going to be interesting because it's like, this is like the new way of life right now for everybody. And it's going to be the new way of life for healthcare for a while. And I do know that we're going to be taking a lot more infection control measures. I really hope the hospital that I was just at or is going to learn a very valuable lesson from all of this. Um, but this kind of behavior is not acceptable and I will not tolerate this. And I do have a moral obligation to report it because that's what we do in healthcare. Um, if it's a, a patient related issue that is a safety related issue that it is, you do need to report it because it, it's not okay. Well, when I iron this mess out, it be. It, when I go to the hairdresser, they hate it because I will walk in with straight hair that is like so limp and so different of a texture than this is. I have I usually go to an African-American hairdresser because my hair is very coarse, but it also maintains it, it. It acts very fine and falls out of the ponytail when I wear it, when I iron it. So when I go to the hairdresser, they try to mimic what I've done and it drives them crazy because I tell them do not use a round brush in my hair or it will turn into like this big afro. Um, but when I iron it out, it, it, it is fine. It falls very limp and very flat and it just lays very, very nice. Um, yeah, I have to be careful with my hair, but I th one of... The lady shared a video on how to get color out of your hair without using bleach. And it was really neat. It was the purple shampoo, Dawn dish soap, baking soda, and the 10 volume developer. Equal parts. And you just rub it into your hair, put a bag over it for 20 minutes, and it strips it right out without destroying your hair. So if I have to take it out, it'll be easy. And in between me using the purple. Um, but since I'm not going to be working for the hospital, I'll be working for the state, it won't be so much of a big deal. And if I wear something over the top of my head, I don't really have to worry about people looking at my purple hair. So scrub caps are great. I'll be investing in a lot. I wish I would have ordered some before I left here, but I kept forgetting. And now it's too late to ship them. So I'll wait till I get where I'm going and I'll order some more. But even with me wearing the white bonnet um, hairnet, you really can't see through it. So um, I don't worry so much about it. When I was in El Paso, I would wear it in pigtails. So it was quite obvious that, you know, I had purple hair and it was against the employer's policy. And that's every employer's option. It's my choice to work there. If I want purple hair, I can go work somewhere else. It's not... Um, they, uh, I don't know what to believe about a vaccine, and I'm not going to even get one or consider getting one until five years down the road when they've been researched and long-term effects have been looked at. And yeah, I'm not running out to get any vaccine. I hope that there is something for the people who want it. That's fantastic. I am not that person. I am not lining up. I would rather wear a freaking face mask all season than stick something in my body that has not been researched. That's like running out and getting some strange heroin off the streets and not knowing what you're putting in your body um, or what the effects are of what you're putting in your body. Um, no, 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 no. I, that's my personal choice. You do what you want, it's your body. But my, no, research. You need to science the crap out of that before I'm putting anything in there. 
Um, yeah, this will be like a contract assignment. So um, that's the joy of traveling is you don't work for certain people. So it, it's like actually not even the hospital that I'll be working for. It's the, it's the Texas State Department of Health. And uh, things are a little bit different when you work for the state, especially in Texas. Everything's different in Texas. Dear Lord, it took a while to get used to stuff. Yeah, it's in research testing right now, Lori, but it's not... You can't have the research that we need to be done in the matter of time. That I mean, this is going to take at least five years to actually see long-term effects of what you're putting in your body. Just because they're researching it right now doesn't mean we're going to have answers about what's going to happen down the road. And that's what I want to see. What the hell's going to happen? We don't even know what's going to happen with this virus right now. With the way it's mutating in the body and people are getting reinfected, we don't even know if the antibody is actually keeping people from getting sick because people are getting sick over and over again. So if they've been tested positive and they have an antibody, why the fuck are they getting sick still? So I'm not putting something in my body that has not been tested. We don't know how this virus is mutating. We don't have any answers about the virus. How the hell are we gonna have answers about a goddamn vaccine? I'm sorry. There's been no science. They're going to have to science the crap out of that. Yeah, unfortunately, they like to test that on the military. And the military is turning away anybody who has tested positive for COVID, whether or not they were symptomatic or not. They don't want to deal with the health care costs associated with it and the risk. So they're really going to be limiting their ability of being able to recruit people because pretty much everybody's going to be affected by this. Z-Dog has a really good vid about why Vax research is really important. And if you talk to Z-Dog, he won't be getting that vaccine for at least five years either. There's no way. No. No way. Not happening. No, 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 no. We need to see outcomes with what happens with this virus before we even have any idea about how to handle a vaccine. Yeah, just researching now. There's going to be lots of research. It's going to have to continue a lot of research. Did you receive your order from Hercules Candy Company? I haven't received anything, no, and I hope it gets here soon, Julie, because I'm gonna be leaving. It'll have to be forwarded or it might be returned to sender um, because I'm gonna be leaving here soon. Um, I hope it gets here soon. I have to go to the post office, hopefully tomorrow to pick up some mail. I'm trying to wait so I don't gotta go down there twice. Um, the wind has been kind of horrendous and I'm not looking forward to getting blasted in the face, but, uh, yeah, I have not received anything. Um, they haven't called me from the front desk and I went down there today to pick up my hair color and there was nothing, um, nothing there. You might have to track the package. If it hasn't shipped yet, we might have to change the address. I know I had to change the address for my heating pad because it won't be shipping out till June. I do like sweets. I just eat them in very, like I had a Kit Kat bar the other night finally. I think it's been like a month since I've had a candy bar. Um, usually if I stress eat, I'm eating proteins or like I had the sweet and sour chicken last night. That's how I did the sweets. But I will jack up some donuts um, and some cookies when I'm in the mood. It just all depends. I don't eat a lot of sweets. I don't crave them. My body doesn't run off of carbs. My body runs off of protein and fuel. Um, so I don't eat a lot of chocolates and snacks. What I really like are nuts and pistachios, but because of problems with my teeth, I have a hard time eating them. Um, so I, you know, I usually like, I love cashews. Um, I love the hell out of some cashews, but, uh, those are the things that I snack on. So if it's like honey roasted peanuts, I'll eat those. <laughs> So, like, something that's got, like, a mild bit of, but when I, like, really want some chocolate and I get craving it, oh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll jack up some gummies. Um, Haribo, I love my Haribo gummy frogs and stuff like that, um, but I don't eat them a lot. I, I really have to be in the mood to snack, and usually it's just when I'm 
I'll throw it in my purse and have it to eat in the car, especially when I drive Uber. Um, that's when those snacks come in really handy <laughs> because when you're stuck in the car all night, I really can't wait to get home, you know, because I might go get my car just so I have it. Um, it might also be easier to rent and not drive my car eight hours across the desert. It does have 330,000 miles on it. Even though it's running well, I'm not trying to push my luck. Um, but I really do miss driving Uber at night. Um, it, it's just very relaxing driving around, listening to music. I, I mean, I, I, if you want spare money, Uber is always a good, a good choice. Um, very relaxing. Oh, Kimberly, Texas would be welcome to have you. Um, it's definitely a different world down there. Um, it's really different. Life is different. It is the Republic of Texas, and I'm proud to live there, and I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. Yeah, I just seen that, Emily. Um, yeah, I still have a low-grade fever every evening. It sucks. Ugh. I was, yeah, I was wondering about you, Emily, when I seen that tornado on the news. No positive tests, so manning not to have answers. Ugh. Yeah, 31% of people, Brittany, who show up to the hospital don't have a, 31% of people who show up to the hospital have a fever. So there, that leaves you 69% of people who don't have a fever. So if it is a low grade fever, your body's immune system is working. Um. The high grade fevers are what you have to worry about. Don't be taking Tylenol to suppress them, like a low grade fever. Um, your body's immune system needs to work. Uh, and when you take things like that, you suppress the ability of the body to do its natural immune system thing. Well, my son is out before they want to test that vax on him. Yeah, no kidding. You could email to see when it's shipped. Um. I don't know how to email. If you place the order, you should be able to log in and see if it's shipped. My aunt was married to her. Oh, no kidding. Well, see, that's crazy that you guys, t you, you talk about Hercules candy and Lori says her aunt was married to the candy owner, Steve. My six-year-old has a headache for two weeks straight, no fever but sore throat, negative for strep. That could be a sign of COVID. It's different in children. And I would, yeah, I would definitely be getting him swabbed. And that's another thing about Texas. They have like brought out the testing force in Texas. Like you can line up and go get tested somewhere. There is no arguing with anybody. High metabolism and low blood sugar. That is my life. Uh, when I go to bed, sleep well. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's my sinuses. It is my sinuses with my eyes because my nose is very congested right now. But I used to live on sinus medication, and I hate taking it now, but I do have my sinus spray. And uh, it's going to rain here, and every time it rains, this is what happens. That's why I'm really happy I don't live on the East Coast anymore and that I'm in the desert because I don't look like this. All righty, still too much of a Pennsylvania native in Texas. Texas is its own country. It is, it is, it is. Um, but you get used to it, or you don't, one or the other. <laughs> I like the food in Texas. Um, it's Taco Tuesday every day. I don't have to go looking for a taco truck. I just have to go to the street corner. And uh, I don't have to worry about um, where I'm going to find a good taco. They're all good. So... Yeah, so that's just really what's going on, guys. This is kind of like a hurry up and wait situation. And as soon as I, now that I've gotten comfortable in my hotel room that I've been in for weeks, um, it'll be time to pack everything up and drag this shit across the country again. The suitcases are very heavy. But thank God the airport's not too far away. I'll probably just fly out of Newark this time instead of going to LaGuardia. We flew in for free to New York, but I'm definitely not going to go to New York just to fly out when I can go to New York or Newark. Um, it's very frustrating trying to drag all that shit around and the airports are not easy to navigate in larger cities. 
and they've limited their flights out of here. So that's like the cost have went up. It's like 400 bucks to fly out of here on short notice when it was like $89. I missed the time of, you know, like really cheap flights. But I'm trying to figure out when I want to book my son's flight. Well, actually, I'm going to fly to Michigan, then we're going to take a train back because I really want to take a train ride with him. It's something different. And um, just to have a different experience in case we don't get to go camping. You know, we'll probably get to go camping locally, but not where I want to go if the things that I want to do aren't reopened. And my dad bought me a National Park Pass for the year, and I really want to be able to go camping and use the damn thing with my kid. That was the whole intention of that. So... I want to be able to use it. It really bums me out. Um, I want to be able to go visit all our national parks. That's what I like to do. Alrighty, I'm going to log off. I'm going to try to find maybe some White Castle, I guess, to munch on before I head back out west where there isn't any. Um, and I'll keep you guys updated when I hear something. But just stay safe. Where, uh, yeah, they won't test you in Utah, probably because you guys aren't in. Julie, I'm going to need an order number, honey. I don't know what else to give them. Um, they have to have something to research it by. They won't test you in Utah. Yeah, if you don't have a lot of tests in Utah, it's probably the reason why they won't test you. Unless you use the word, I traveled outside of the area. Um, but they're trying to get the a test out. They're doing it in the hardest hit areas first. And um, in those areas that are not hard hit, they're probably not getting as many tests out there yet. And it's going to take a minute. But we are going to, we will get there. And if anything, try to travel to an area that does have testing. I mean, you don't have to be a state citizen to get the test done. Um, there's always options and there's ways around it. There's ways around everything. And you don't, there are independent testing facilities. You don't have to go to the Department of Health. Um, that's another misconception. Or the hospital to get it done. There are other places to go. Um, I'm going to have to look up if there's a website for the states that have uh, independent testing centers set up. You kind of have to look around on the news. Quest, they're not accepting insurance payments yet from what I heard from somebody, Emily. Um, so it just all depends. But yeah, I'll be getting the hell out of Jersey. I'm going to miss... Some of, well, I didn't really get to try much of the food here. I didn't really get to experience much of anything. I'll have to come back when the state reopens and fun resumes. Um, it'll be nice to go to a state that does memorialize its fallen in honor of Memorial Day and not forget about people and instead of worrying about barbecues and airing out their cabin. That really pissed me off to hear about that. All right, guys, stay safe. Wear the mask when you go out around stupid people. Um, God, I would just even write on my mask, stay away from stupid people. And that way, like, they just see you coming and know, you know what? I'm probably just going to avoid that person. Um, anything to just keep people away from you right now. Any kind of offensive behavior that would keep somebody away from you would probably be a good thing to do right now. Don't need to be rude to make a statement. You know, all it takes is a sign. Maybe when I get home, I'll start designing some t-shirts with some catchy phrases on them to sell to support staying away from stupid people because the no mask party thing and this spreading this in mass groups is just ridiculous. I mean, has, please have some social responsibility. No, they usually have to have, they'll ask you for an order number or something that you can be researched by um, because it usually goes off the person who placed the order, not the person receiving it. So you usually have to have the receiver or the 
sender or the person who placed the order's information. Um, that's how things usually go with those companies. So pretty much any company. Um, like when I logged in to check out my heating pad, I needed my name or my credit card number, my email address, my billing zip code, all of that, not where it was being sent to. So if you can send that to me, um, I don't even know if I can try to look online right now to see if they have a, um, depends on this freaking laptop. It took all day to update all my Adobe apps. I wish Adobe would come out with less updates. <laughs> Because there's a lot of apps on the Creative Cloud that need to be updated. It's a pain in the ass. Come on. Here we go. And I know everything's behind right now because of COVID. Everything's because of COVID. We're slowly getting here. Hell, I could always just go over there and, like, try to pick it up. I don't know how far Syracuse is from here. And I probably just said that completely wrong. Um, yeah, you would have to, yeah, there's a, a customer login that you would have to log in. And, oh, that looks good right now. You're making me hungry, woman. <laughs> I would log in on the website. There is a login option, and you can track the order. Los Angeles back in the room. Yeah, you guys are, let's see, it's 11, so it's only 8 o'clock out there. It's very early. Um, just trying to catch up on things like with the Navajo Nation, um, waiting to hear back to see if there's a way to, um, if anybody's volunteered to take water in, there's a lot of people who do want to donate water cases. Um, they're only getting like a gallon of water a day, and, you know, they're out in the desert, and we need water. No, yeah, if it's, it's, yeah, it's easier to just log in on the, on the, on the web page and, uh, yeah, um, God, those chocolate drops look really good. <laughs> actually, their, their candy actually looks very, very good. When I get home to Michigan, I'll be going up to Mackinac for some Mackinac Island fudge. Um, I'm looking forward to that, but all of these candies look really good, Julie. Good selection. I'm looking forward to if I can get it. But if not, you might want to, uh, if it hasn't shipped out yet and it's not going to arrive in the next few days, I would ask if they can hold the order until I get to where I'm going next. Um, I don't know if there's a way to forward anything because I think that the hotel would just return to sender instead of trying to forward it. So and it's a pain in the ass with the mail here. It's like I put both addresses on the box that I get shipped, and it's like nobody can deliver a package right. Uber can't even deliver food right. It's like I it gets canceled because they go around the corner to the side entrance, which is where the hotel address is, and it's like in the bus lane. Instead of going around the corner to where the big freaking Hilton sign is, they just hey, I can't drop your food off. Yes, you can go around the corner and I got to argue with Uber to get my money back. And in the meantime, I'm starving to death. You should have seen me inhale my Five Guys burger today. It was history because um, I had to wait for the order again. <laughs> so I'm going to get some sleep. I'm going to go take some sinus meds because I am looking at the bags under my eyes. I don't even wear makeup, but this is the reason why I do. And the last time I put makeup on, now I have like an irritation in my eye and it's like a small sty. And uh, that's why I don't wear makeup because I get shit in my eyes. I keep coming and going, too many texts, Mary Kay order, Pampered Chef order going on. I have that problem with crafting supplies. That's another thing I hoard. I've been sitting here ordering stuff to store my supplies in when I get home because I had to call my friend to go over there to pick up all of my paper because my cat holes got on top of my cardboard dividers that I had. It was like a like heavy duty classroom organizers, but I have a lot of freaking paper. And I do mean a lot. And the cat holes got on top of it and I looked and all of my shit was all over the floor. So he nicely stacked it up for me so I can organize it when I get home. So I just ordered the um 
the uh, 12 by 12 bin organizers. There's a way to make zip tie shelves out of them for your 12 by 12 cardstock and your paper. So I'll be making those when I get home, which are a lot more sturdy than the cardboard, which sags when you have too much paper. Because I like to hoard things. I can never have enough colors. Paint, I'm the same way with paints. Um, but I go through a lot of paint. And I, oh, and I ordered my Ikea tables. So I can do my epoxy resin tabletops with my colors. So I'm really freaking excited about that project when I get home. And they reopened the farmer's market that I do my craft shows at. So I'll be able to have more products there. Um, ooh, and I'll be near Lone Star Candle Company. Maybe I can go pick up my candle wax instead of paying $90 to ship it. See, there's always the bright side of the coin when things like this happen. Um, I get all my candle products through Lone Star Candle Company, and they're over on that side of the state, and it's a long drive to just go over there to get candle wax. And it's really expensive to ship it. So if I go over there to buy it in bulk, I can just go pick it up. And they have wonderful candle scents. Um, so, yeah, see, there's always a bright side. you got to find that silver lining and all the negative shit, man. It's there. Um, I'm looking forward to making more candles because it's really, really fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. I like to go to the antique stores and antique and find cool things to make the candles out of. I had some, like, really neat a copper um, things that I had found that I was able to use. So... Yeah, totally excited about that now. I'm glad I thought about that. I'm going to be Googling how far it is to Lone Star Candle Company from where I know. <laughs> A couple hour drive is fine with me. I'm used to driving. Ten hours is not my not my cup of tea. Storage and organizing is what I get down to because when I get a RV, I'm going to have to have like racks built in for all my craft supplies. Only seven people working during COVID could ask for Terry who handles all the shipping, but she would be helpful. I will try. I will try. Um, I have so many phone calls that I'm making right now. It's ridiculous. It's like my I'm, I'm, I was on the phone all day today trying to multitask and fill out all these paperwork forms and send forms in. And then the lady's email could only like receive like a certain amount of megabytes. Um, it was really, really a pain in the butt so I had to send everything individually and I have a lot of licenses so then I had to send all the copies of those and it was like really ridiculous but yeah if I'm gonna try to order a midnight snack I've eaten all my snacks um I've kind of I really don't feel like eating peanut butter and jelly I lived on that when I first got here and I'm tired of it but yeah I'll keep you guys informed as soon as I hear something hopefully I'll know something in the next 24 hours as to where I'm going um it's like, do I, am I am I coming? Am I going? Fun times. Yeah, see if you can find it. If they haven't mailed it out yet, just have them hold off on completing the order. Um, and then I will let you know my new address when I get to where I'm going because I'll be there for eight weeks. And it'll be going to Texas. It'll be hot. So hopefully I'll, <laughs> even if it's melted, it still tastes good. But, um, yeah, I'll let you guys know where I'm heading. Um, hopefully all the packages that have been sent get delivered soon. I know the postal service is slow. My buddy paid for overnight with my medications, and they were supposed to be here today by noon, and nothing's been updated in the system, so I have no freaking clue where my medications are at. It's always, it's always something. All right, guys, you have a good night, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can on Facebook. <clears throat> Thank you, Kimberly. Um, it'll be definitely a lot better situation, safety-wise. And there's another place up in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's a long-term care facility that um, I might possibly consider if if this doesn't go through, you know, because it just all depends on how many people have been submitted and how many agencies have access to the job and there's just all sorts of different factors that come into play when it's traveling. Yes, I'm going to snack and hit it. No Cheez-Its. I have demolished my Cheez-Its. I have the Cheddar Jack flavored ones and the Swiss or the white cheddar and not a fan. I eat them in desperation, but yeah, I've eaten all my plain Cheez-Its. 
and I don't want to drag anything with me across the country that I don't need to. So I'm trying to like minimize all of my snacks. <laughs> so, yep, I will keep you informed. Hopefully I find out tomorrow what's going on and, uh, I'm going to try to get to some of the computer stuff tonight. Um, I want to work on that video and I want to check out my website for the business. I got to try and lay that out and, uh, reach out to people who can help me with it and all that good stuff. I got, I got too many irons in the fire right now. All right. You guys have a good night. Take it. Be safe. Please be safe and keep supporting each other. Please. You guys are awesome.